Hello everybody and welcome back to some mega modded Ed's the Gungeon. We finally have him back. The man, the Hi. myth, the useless piece I'm of alive. shit. It's never named. I don't say that. You're, He's back. I'm, I'm not useless. I'm not, I prom my mommy says I'm useful. <laughs> Basically, if you didn't know uh, or couldn't tell already by the lack of his presence, his laptop broke and he's not been able to Again. join me for a while. Um, so he, he had it sent off. And now he's joining me via, not his fixed laptop, that's still been repaired, but uh, instead by a replacement. Some janky replacement that is prone to um, maybe cutting out at some point, so we'll see. Um, yeah, if he randomly disappears, that's why. It doesn't like, like, uh, intense internet traffic. So yeah. I've got the I've got the Windows Internet Diagnostic up because for some reason that actually works to fix the problem when it happens. <laughs> okay, fair enough. We're gonna try but, like, and beat Bunch out, which I still haven't like, achieved with this machine yet once, but we'll try. Have you have you ever had like that that work where it's like uh, Windows is trying to fix the problem and then it actually fixes the problem? Nope, never. I mean, I say I say that. The only time it works for me is when it's like your PC crashes and it's like let Windows repair and then it boots up after that. But then again, I don't actually know if Windows did anything or it would have just booted up anyways. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, so I had never had Windows actually fix anything until this laptop and its internet connection. If the internet goes out, it'll take a, like a minute, but the inbuilt troubleshooting tool uh, does bring it back so i've got that up just in case fair enough i don't hopefully, know why it works that way so hopefully it keeps on working all right don't fuck it up i'm trying I, it's been so long since i fought the rat i love the visuals on this it's so cool well that's the this is the idea fuck you beat him finally actually get to bring in some hegemony credits and um, casings with me i meant casings not hegemony credits i just read the first thing on the list there but still, I won 52 casings. Huzzah. Let's get into the Gungeon. Yeah. Let's do it. Shmoney. But yeah, there's some there's some big stuff happening in Gungeon modding at the minute behind the scenes. Like some really I'll, big stuff. So never I'll let you explain kinda, it because I'm, say, I'm yeah, tired of explaining. That's fair. Basically, um, for any of you that know Risk of Rain 2, you're going to be very happy about this. Risk of Rain 2 oh, and a few other... Um, <laughs> A few of the pretty big games like Inscription run off of a mod manager called R2 Modman. Um, yeah, the, the, the games don't. The mods for them run the off mods of for mod them manager. Run it. Yeah, not the games. Uh, they, they run off a thing called R2 Modman, which is essentially a mod manager for a site called Thunderstore. Also, starting with Scattershot is awesome. Triple Gun here and Temporary Boost to Speed, Rate of Fire, and Refills to Users Current Clip. Oh, that's really cool. Um, yeah, so... We've got some really, really good stuff coming up because that's basically going to completely overhaul how you install mods. Um, like, completely, completely. No more Mod the Gungeon. No more um, Mod Workshop, which is a site that no one's ever heard of. Um, it's, it's just... And a site that no one likes. Yeah. So it's going to be a huge improvement to installing mods. And now we're actually going to have a mod manager rather than all in installing them yourself. So you no longer have to touch Gungeon's files at all. You can also update mods when they update. And that's all going to be happening within the next three weeks to a month, maybe. Yeah. A lot of and mods have gonna already be a been ported. Thing. But... It's going to be a big thing for Turtle because he's fucking terrible at updating. I, I am not great at updating, but also it's just like... It's going to be so much easier to find quality mods and find when things update and stuff. It's going to be nice. And hopefully, hopefully, just hopefully, it's going to bring in new modders and new people playing mods. Which should hopefully yeah. be like the renaissance, the um, the revival well, of Gungeon have, mods. We have sort of organized... This is just a cheesy thing I do. I, I say we, I say this. And I've, I've said it so much that other people have started saying it. So I guess we that uh, say this. Modding is sort of separated into eras. <laughs> like, you have the Dark Ages. At uh, first I which... thought you said eras, as in, like, modding eras. <laughs> no, no, that's, uh, that's, well, that too, but. Eras. Um, eras, yes. Uh... So you have the Dark Ages of modding, which was before Kyle, before Apache. What the fuck? It switched over to its other form while oh, I was shooting. <laughs> I, th I thought it was breaking. Yes, yeah, so did I. <laughs> um, uh, 
uh, which was before Kyle, before Apache, when the best mods were like, this three skins are the bullet to have a mustache, <laughs> yeah. and this gives you infinite keys. Like, that, that's the sort of the Dark Ages, back when mods were like, nothing. Primitive. Then you have the Renaissance, which was when uh, uh, like Apache and Kyle got into modding and we all started it and and um, it sort of kicked off this current sphere of modding with all the modders that we know and love today and all the mods that you're using here. Yeah. And we have decided, or I have decided, that we are now calling this the Modding Industrial Revolution. <laughs> Yeah, actually getting in some real processes that are commonly used in other areas of the industry, rather than hacking away at things with rocks and sticks. Yeah, we're not like, we're, we're using like proper tools, we're not like carving mods out of like, a fine <laughs> walnut log. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. And uh, another reason why I really like the idea of calling it the modding industrial revolution was because the first mod ported to... Was the Gundustrial Revolution, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> was Gundustrial Revolution. Yeah. Um, twin pins is probably a good idea here. I've also got four keys on this floor already. Pretty amazing. Well, yeah, you got, like, a couple from the machine. I did indeed. Speaking of. Oh, nice. Gumbers. Gumby. Speaking of, I've been... I've been animating a lot of like gun uh, bows and crossbows, and it's fucking agonizing. Really? <laughs> Guns are so much easier to animate than crossbows. I imagine so, to be fair, yeah, because you've got the, 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 the string pull and everything to deal with. Uh, okay, well, while you're firing, look at the gun in the bottom right. Oh, yeah, 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 I see that, yeah. It's moving by one pixel. What the fuck is this? Oh, is this the, um, uh, the, the 360 degree wheezy wheezy wheezy? Looks to be. Why did I become I four years old for a second? Wheezy wheezy wheezy. <laughs> it happens, okay? Sometimes, you know, you're sitting down and you turn into a toddler. At this point, I'm just, it's like I'm just trying to burn ammo to get to the next form as quickly as possible. Oh god, this is... Oh god, ah. this is getting fucked with the beat. That was entirely your Yeah, fault. it definitely was, but I just, I don't know, I wasn't ready for it. Oh, nice. So, the thing with beams is that they actually are affected by fire rate, but not in the way you would think. Oh, they, they just expend more ammo, don't they? No, they expend more ammo. And they have an, a DPS increase that corresponds uh, to the fire rate increase. But it doesn't actually increase the rate that the beam comes out of the barrel. It just increases the damage of the beam. So on beams, the fire rate stat is literally just damage stat 2.0. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's good. It's a really, really interesting way of doing it. But, it, you know, it works. At least it's not useless. Oh, is that Mimic still guaranteed? I don't know if it's guaranteed, but I just noticed it there. Um, I did suggest, uh, basically, Hutz went to this floor recently, and essentially he was a bit disappointed that the floor was quite difficult, or what he thought was quite difficult. Um, oh, and... Turtles, you're still ringing on this. See, Turtle uh, doesn't think this floor is difficult because I, he not, made no, the rooms, no. and he doesn't want to accept I, that he made them harder I'm than not, he intended. I'm not saying that the floor isn't difficult. It certainly is, but I don't feel like it's that much more difficult than the oubliette. But saying that, the room design on this floor is very different from every other floor in terms of shape and layout. And I made them all, so I remember most of them. It is going to be easier for me. So I accept the fact that it is going to be harder for people that haven't been to this floor many times. Like, significantly. Oh, Am I the only one? Is that like a video problem, or are you getting a lag spike every time yep, you fire? Yeah, I'm getting gun? a lag spike every time I fire. That's good. Okay. Like every every wave of shots creates a new lag spike. This is a um, really cool. This is a really cool gun, but I might advise like maybe trying to 
use like oh uh, never mind never mind i just realized it's because of scatter shot the gun by oh, itself would be fine of course it is yeah like, I, I was about to say maybe it should like fire bigger projectiles but less of them but then i realized it's not it wouldn't fire that many projectiles normally so it's yeah. fine it is, it is it's just scatter shot being scatter shot but anyways what i was gonna say is so um hooks kind of said that it there should be more incentive to go to the floor. And honestly, I do agree. There isn't much incentive to go here. It's very much just the same of going to the oubliette, really. And for a slightly harder floor with a significantly harder boss, uh, I'll certainly say, uh, it should be more rewarding. So the, the yeah, options well, I've his suggested... Biggest complaint, his biggest complaint was the boss. Yeah, I, I, like, I think one thing that I, that I sort of forget about and one thing that does make the boss significantly harder is that it has spawn waves, which basically no bosses in Gungeon do, and the, the enemies that it spawns aren't easy. So, basically, yeah, my three suggestions were lower the amount of spawn waves, if we can do that, or at least lower the tier of enemies that it spawns to, like, arrow kin or something, um, rather than, like, snakes and chameleons. Um, have a free, like, a, a chest of <laughs> random quality appear on the floor with a guaranteed key that comes along with it somewhere. Or the thing with snakes, reintroduce the, um, the war mix. The thing with snakes is that they have predictive aim. That's what makes them difficult, is yeah. that they are essentially just veteran shotgun kin, but without the death burst. That's yeah. all that they are. You're pretty much right. Yeah, so it does, it, like, I will say that, like, the the main, at least for me, the main thing about this, this uh, floor being hard is it's a bunch of new enemies and a bunch of new layouts that you don't know. Learning them takes time. Learning them is difficult. It's the same as any other floor on Gungeon, really. But with the added difficulty of the room layouts being significantly different than normal floors, i.e. none of them are s square, I made sure all of them are weird shapes because it's a jungle, and also, yeah, the boss is is definitely going to be harder. I mean, it is literally an end game boss repurposed. Yeah. And keep in mind, for that end game boss, you're supposed to have a high damage, fully automatic yeah. web. I think Robot's left hand is yeah, S tier. Yeah. It is, it is. And you're the, intended the, the to have health, that for the fight. I gotta say, the health is reduced from what it is in the past. So it doesn't have as much health as it does in the past, but still it might need to be reduced a bit more, especially for a second floor boss. I feel like it might be a tiny bit overtuned. Yeah. Like, it's, and another thing was that you have to give up two keys to come here. Yeah, so, th so that was another thing I suggested. You, Maybe if you don't get if you don't get good key RNG, you don't you'll get good be guns. fighting a boss. You'll be fighting a boss that intends that was intended to be fought with an S tier weapon, and you might there is a non-zero chance that you will be fighting it with your starter. Yeah, yeah, it is rough. It can be. Um, it's something, things that I haven't considered. Another thing that I considered and suggested to Apache was maybe just making this floor have one key entry. So that you guaranteed can open up a chest on the first floor. Yeah, something like that. It doesn't, it could even be something like one key and, I don't know, health or money or something. Yeah. Just like... I don't know, pay your way, kids. I do really like the idea of reintroducing the guaranteed mimics, uh, war mimics, because that's like between a D and a C tier item or gun that you get, and you can get like one or two of those, one in the starting room, one in the ending room sort of thing. I like, I like yeah. that idea a lot. I think that would go a long way. I think Hell, it needs he could to, even, it doesn't he could even be... make, I, I'm just saying this, but he could even make his own jungle, like special jungle version of the war mimic that was yeah. slightly harder. But again, like maybe it could give you better items. Like it was, like it looked, it looked like trees or like a, a shrub, like a square topiary or something. Yeah. Just spitballing ideas. I gotta say, I, I don't think all of these ideas that I've thrown out need to be introduced, but at least two of any of them should be. You have, you have two options. You will I, pick them or you will die. Because, like, like I said, uh, this is your last warning, <laughs> Apache. You've got to. We're coming uh, he, for you. He did reply to me though and said that he's open to uh, ideas of doing that. Because, because I, I think, I think uh, Hutz does have a point. I do feel like, um, feel like he's maybe overestimating how hard it is because it's his first few times on the floor. But I do agree with him in the fact that there isn't much incentive as a good player even to come to this floor other than it's different. 
Yeah. I think one thing he said to me that, that again makes a lot of sense is if he used to do a series or like lots of videos on this and had this mod enabled, if it didn't get changed, because it's enabled, he'd feel compelled to go here on every video. But if there's no reason to go here and it's going to make his runs more difficult, he wouldn't want to. And therefore would be more inclined to just not use the mod altogether, which is fair enough. Yeah. Ding dong. Ding dong. So, I have a handful of things written down because I have my design notebook with me. Nice. Or one of them. Because the other one is full. I want to add a fishing rod. It lets you go fishing? No, I want to add a fishing rod that, like, it's a gun. <laughs> How exactly was that going to work? Uh, you fish them. You fish them. Yeah, I don't know. I'm th I've... <laughs> I haven't really thought of much beyond you know, the fact that I'm definitely calling it Neptune's Nemesis. I'd love to see a fishing rod that actually lets you fish into pits um, okay. and like fish I for did, items. I did consider that as something maybe like the uh, sort of how the the knight's gun works. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, like the knight's but, gun. Like it, you could, you have a small chance to fish up fish-related items. Oh yeah, like the barrel and stuff. Or you have a small, like, at the end of the day, I wouldn't want it to be too overpowered. No, no, no. You, want to, you, you wouldn't want it to be too good either, because if it was really good, it'd get tedious, because you'd feel like you have to use it. But obviously fishing as a mini game is always a little tedious. I like fishing. Uh, no, I do too. Games. I do too. But I wouldn't, like, if it was too good, I'd feel compelled to do it every time, and it'd obviously like, slow down the pace of runs. I, I love fishing in Stardew Valley. I, I'm the one person I know who likes fishing in Terraria. <laughs> I, I just like fishing in games. I don't know why. I, I always like, just, like, um, both Revita and, um, and Hades both have really good fishing mini games. Sometimes I consider how funny it is that fishing mini games have essentially become a trope in games. Cool. Yeah. Like, where did that come from? Last shout, damn it. Yeah, I don't know. It, it is quite common, though. Like, in a game like Stardew Valley, it makes sense because the game's all about living off the land. But... In other games where there really is no reason for there to be a fishing minigame, they just include one. Like, yeah. why, why can Kirby go fishing? <laughs> There's just no need, is there? Um, but it's almost like I kind of appreciate the fact that he can go fishing and that other characters can go fishing. I think it's one because... of those things that it's like, it, it's it's an extra thing to add to the game as, as like a little, dude, that shot, wow. Like a, as a, like a little mini game um, that's really easy to add and kind of lore wise can fit in to any game. This, it's, it's where boomers and, and, it's where boomers and gamers come together in their love of fishing. It is. Fish fear me. Women fear me. I am alone. Mega um, hand, are you kidding me? Mega hand's good. Shut it up. is good. It's boring, though. But I, I was thinking that maybe to balance out the fishing rod, it could have a chance to, um... Oh, they're back. They are back. It could, like, have a chance to fish up fish-themed enemies. Hmm, that'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah, because there is fish-themed enemies. That'd make a lot of sense, yeah. So, like, you might wind up fishing up a bullet shark or a fish bullet. Or yeah, I really like the idea of that. Of course, hmm. again, needs to be balanced, but it's just an idea. Uh, again, spitballing here. Yeah, I like the idea have, of it a lot. Have you seen Sparpy's lob shot? I have not. Also, you forgot the wooden crest. Yeah, I didn't really want it, <laughs> I'll be honest. Well, oh, come on, we have to go there. I want more time. I want more time to talk. I don't have a lot um, of time. You know this. <laughs> I know this, but I'm not I dying. deny this. <laughs> just, just for reference, I'm not dying, people. I just 
I'm basically he's dying. No, turtle. If we don't, if we don't go to the the belly, you are dying. That's a promise. Oh damn. <laughs> um. Have you seen Sparpy's lob shot? No, I have not. He basically put in painstaking effort to code a, to basically code shot height into Gungeon, which oh, is damn. not a mechanic Gungeon has. But he made something sort of akin to, I, I guess the best way to put it into perspective for an Isaac player would be something like Hemolacria, where it yeah. arcs up and hits the ground. And so he made a, a catapult that shoots a rock up in an arcing formation and damages enemies that it lands on. Interesting. And he has made this code public and other modders can use that mechanic. So I've been thinking about what I would do with it. Nice. And something that I want to do is a lob shotgun where it like launches a, a loose spray of projectiles that just like shower down on the enemies. I like the idea, definitely. Seems like it could be a kind of synergy magnet sort of thing. I'm calling it the Bender Bus. Because Bender it's bus. bent upwards. <laughs> it's bent upwards. The barrel is bent. Is it, is it like sprited like a bendy bus? No. Why not? Uh, because it's meant to be a joke on Blunder Bus. Aww. <laughs> I thought it was a joke about a bendy bus. Oh my god, Blender Bus! Blender How is bus. that not a gun? A blender gun! Blender Bus, I'm writing that down. <laughs> Oh my god, why am I such a failure today? It's because you don't actually know this guy's attacks, because whenever you see him, you, <laughs> that like, is, that kill is, him. That is very true. Like, you haven't learned this guy's attacks because you always, like, steamroll him. annihilate him, yeah. And Bunny knows that you steamroll every boss he makes, and which is why he is intentionally making the prisoner hard as fuck. To, oh, uh, the, make the, you Ale the Alexa boss. Pain. It's not Alexa. It. It just has his exact color scheme and visuals. It's called the Prisoner. <laughs> and keep in mind, uh, if I recall correctly, the form you're talking about is only first phase. So. <laughs> it still looks exactly like Alexa. It look. It looks like he just used Alexa's character to make it. Bunny is. It's based on the um, the challenge shrine you know the hooded yeah, figure yeah, yeah, that yeah. yeah it's based on that all i do really is just change the golden trim of his hood to some other color because it just looks way or, too much like alexa or he could pretend it was meant to be alexa all along to bait alexa into it well that, that's fair but alexa has already said he's gonna play it i messaged him yeah we we used you as a, a puppet to do our bidding we did Uh, I've also got written down uh, Harpoon, where you stick it in enemies and reloading it rips it out of them and causes them to bleed. That's ma that makes me sad because for some reason I thought it was going to be a weapon where you fired a harp into enemies. Well, I can also write that down. A Harpoon. <laughs> yeah. So... Harpoon and Harp Space Oom are written down now. <laughs> nice. I also wanted to do something. Ha have you seen the Corridor, uh, Corridor Crew uh, channel? What? <laughs> are you familiar with Corridor Digital? Nope. <laughs> They are a VFX studio that posts a, some really high quality work on YouTube. Like, they make professional tier CGI. Okay. And they also work in practical effects. What's the synergy? Ah. Uh, so, the gun will sometimes say flavor text when hitting an enemy, and that's by default. Now, whenever it says flavor text, it drops money. Ooh, nice. <laughs> oh, you also have peepees. I only have what? You have two synergies. Do I? You have the peepees synergy. Well, it wouldn't be firing that way if you didn't have the peepees synergy. Okay, fair enough then. What? I don't, I don't remember what's causing that. Um. <laughs> it's so laggy. It's brilliant. Check your items, see what it's synergizing with. 
Oh, Mega Hand. Ah, oh, Mega Hand, of course. Because Mega Hand, it looks like it looked like peepees. I remember. I remember the logic behind that. Now it looked like peepees. <laughs> okay then. Um. So. Yeah, peepee synergy makes it fire little little heads when it uh, when the bullets burst into something. Nice. Uh, but anyways, the corridor, so that corridor digital does really high tier special effects. Uh, if you've ever seen like videos from back in the day of like, I remember they used to do stuff like there was one about a cat where they like did the special effects of someone glitching into the floor in an alleyway, but it was like in real life and they were doing special effects to make it look like a video game glitch. Oh, I think I have seen that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was corridor. If I recall correctly, at least, I could be completely wrong. But the they have a sort of behind-the-scenes channel called Corridor Crew, and on it, they recently did a video about making a prosthetic finger that could fire nerf darts. <laughs> nice. So one of the one of the guys they know has is missing his, his pinky finger on one of his hands. And he has a a prosthetic finger, and he wanted because they have nerf duels, he wanted a version of his prosthetic finger that could hold and fire a nerf dart. And they actually built it in the video and demonstrated it working, which I think was really cool. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, but part of me wants to make a, a nerf thing, a dart finger item. I like the idea. Well, you've already got the nerf bullet sprites anyways. So, there you go. Yeah. Thanks, cultist. Um, I also want to do, like, I have a collection of, uh, puns for enemies that I haven't sprited yet. But stuff oh, like, nice. uh, Colossal Squib. Squib. Yes. Or, uh, Galen, who is a very good and very prominent sprite artist in the modern community. He suggested oh, Shrapneel. Oh, yes. I, I, I gotta say, I've been seeing some of the stuff he's been doing. Yeah, he suggested shrapnel. Trap what? As in an shrapnel, as in an eel, but shrapnel. Oh, shrapnel! I get it. I get it. I think it's a trap Neil. No, don't do that. Neil's been through enough. Um. <laughs> uh, I also have stuff like. I want to do a bullet train, but I want to call it the Black Powder Express. Because Black Powder Express is actually the name of an old, obsolete uh, brand of paper rifle cartridges. Hmm. You can tell how obscure I've gone into the research for this. Like... I'm talking about old rifle cartridges. I'm talking about like fucking. You've really shh, gone gone to the weird side of the internet for guns and puns. Yeah, uh, I've got one here written down: rolling block. Which the idea is that it's a lead cube, but instead of a cube, it's a sphere, and it rolls around the room. Um, and rolling block is also a type of uh, load mechanism. Not load mechanism, but like you have rolling block mechanisms in guns that assist in reloading. All right, okay. And it's it's just sort of like a, a pun on that. Uh, hast thou slain the Jabberglock? The Jabberglock. Yes, I really want to do something based on the Jabberwock. Uh, especially since the Vorpal, uh, Vorpal gun is already in the game. Oh, they, they share a reference. Uh, yeah, so, are you familiar with the Jabberwock? Not really. I've heard of it, but I'm not, I'm not familiar. It's from a poem by Lewis Carroll, the same guy who wrote Alice in Wonderland. Mm. And it's about someone going to slay a beast called the Jabberwock. Yeah, yeah, that... I'm gonna say, I think there's a Borderlands reference to it. There's an enemy in that called the Jabberwocky or something like that. 
yeah, Jabberwock. Some people say Jabberwocky. Um, because in the, uh, I believe in the poem itself, they call it the Jabberwock, but the poem itself is called Jabberwocky. Yeah. Okay, definitely here's, heard here's, of Jabberwocky, then. Twas Brillig. Oh, no, here, here we go. Twas Brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the groves, and the momraths outgrabe. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jubjub bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorp he took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the manxum so he fo foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree, and stood a while and thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, the Jabberwock, with eyes of flame, came whistling through the torgy wood, and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with his head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O oh, frabjous day, kaloo kalay, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig in the slithy toves, did uh, gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borough groves, and the momraths outgrabe. Man, people back in the day were high as shit. So, the whole point of the Jabberwock poem is that it's nonsense. It does not make sense, and half the words are make completely made up. But, because of that, it's a really interesting exercise in how you can form context for what something means through just contextual words and without needing to actually describe the thing in a sentence that people understand. Interesting, yeah. You're, like, you know what they're talking about without having to know what they're talking about sort of thing. By the way, I'm going to die yeah. this run. Uh, yeah, why are you dying so much, by the way? Because the game's lagging like shit, I'll be honest. <laughs> no, 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 I'm play no, no. I am playing badly. I'm definitely playing badly, but the frame rate is not good. There is a lot of hitches that are getting me hit. So, one of my, my favorite examples of this is... Uh, what is it? Um, I have it written down here somewhere. The Goss deck distims the doshes. That's a, a sort of a sentence that is meant to demonstrate how you can draw context from a sentence without knowing what any words in it actually mean. Yeah. The Gostak distims the doshes. In that, you, you have a definition for what a Gostak is, what a, what distimming is, and what the doshes are. Because what is the Gostak? The Gostak is what distims the doshes. What is distimming? Distimming is what the Gostak does to the doshes. What is what are the gosh what what are the doshes? The doshes are what the Gostak distims. Also, yeah, I fucking wonder why the frame rate's low. Yeah, this item isn't really helping, I'll be honest. It's like whenever I activate it, regardless of whether I'm shooting or not, the game just lags. But oh, yes, yeah, I love those nonsense sentences, and then that's where the Jabberwock is from. Yeah. Um, and that's where the Vorpal gun and Vorpal bullets are a reference to. His Vorpal sword went snicker snack. There is actually a, a synergy in the game called snicker snack between, I think it's Vorpal bullets and Excalibur. Oh, that's cool. But I think it's a shame that there isn't actually a Jabberwock that we can kill in the game without Vorpal swords. That'd be cool. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be... Like, it'd be good if, like, if you killed it with the Vorpal gun or Vorpal bullets, you got the latter. The what? Like, if you if you have Vorpal bullets and you kill it, you get the Vorpal gun. If you have the Vorpal gun and kill it, you get Vorpal bullets. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, um, obviously, I know it's niche, but it'd be like, cool, at least. Right. I also have written down here, uh... Garden Gnome, Garden which is Gnome. sort of, yeah, which is sort of a reference to too many things to list, 
like one Ganada Ganelf, Ganada Ganoblin, yes. Gnome. Two, uh, it's just a reference to garden gnomes. Three, there is actually a type of weapon called a garden gun. Uh, and four, it's uh, sort of what I was thinking of was in the uh, I don't remember. I think it's YV's mansion theme in Nuclear Throne. Yeah, he says. Me no believe in trends. Me no believe in gnomes, uh, and he says it like th and he says it like that. <laughs> and that sort of uh, you got a lot of references built into one thing there. Then like a hell of a lot. Yeah. I've also written down Remlin. Uh, I, I'm debated on this. Either Remlin or or Gremington. Gremington sounds grem better. Oh, one minute. Gremlin. Uh, one minute. I need to go pick up a package. Someone just called up. One oh, second. Oh. I'm back, people. Let's carry on. Yeah, he's got his package. I do. It's not even mine, it's my girlfriend's. Oh god, your girlfriend is massive, bulbous package. Exactly. Um, and later she's gonna wear it. <laughs> oh, god, you know, it's it's there's nothing better than when I say something terrible and you just you follow <laughs> through on it. Well to be fair, she quite literally did order a clothing item, so later she is gonna wear it. You don't know what the clothing item is. Could be a huge package, who knows? Maybe I'm into pegging, you don't know. <laughs> You're right, I don't. I'm gonna keep it that way. <laughs> um, I've also got written down uh, Nagant, or Nagant, because uh, Mosin Nagant is a type of yes. rifle, and a Naga is a type, is a snake person in mythology. With a what? So Naga. What? Uh, yeah, 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 like the snake thing. Yeah, Naga. It's a person with the lower body of a snake. Yeah. So Naga sounded like a good pun. You're a what, Harry? I'm a small British boy. A what? I like this ranger. It's good shit. Yeah, Ranger is usually, uh, requires a lot more thought, but you have bullets just going everywhere. Also, Secret Room at the bottom. Yeah, I see that. I've got the map that showed me. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've also got written down Archerfish as a an, an arrowhead, an arrowkin, but stylized <laughs> after the fish. Sorry, bullet. I just found that hilarious that you find. It's like, it's dangerous to go alone and take this, and he just gives you a bag of trash. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, why are you here? Could you take this out for me? <laughs> Oh, fuck it, it's dangerous to go alone and take this. <laughs> she just hands you a bag of trash. <laughs> what a rude dick. I've also got a uh, death ray here. And it's just a manta ray, but with a laser on it. <laughs> nice. Also, Pomeroyal. Pomeroyal? Based on the uh, Pomeroy shells, which were incendiary bullets meant to take down Zeppelins. Hmm. By meant to, you mean definitely did. <laughs> I, I I mean... They were, they were made for that purpose, yeah. Yeah, they were meant to take down Zeppelins, and... But, I don't know, how many... I, I say meant to because I have not found uh, anyone saying they actually worked. Because, like, I imagine there are easier ways to take down a Zeppelin. Like a, I, I don't know, a needle. Yeah. What kind of gun is this? Interesting. Cool. 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 Oh my god, each one of these counts as a pair just cool. gives me a coolness upgrade. Now you have lasers too. You should probably st like be standing more still when he does that attack. No. Should... I hope that you should. I hope you just die because you're standing right next to him. <laughs> Bunny, you should make it so that if a player's standing too close to that thing when it goes nuclear, they take damage. At least one hit. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, but I have written down here, uh, 
my notebook is basically uh, me going, wouldn't that be cool? That would be cool. I think that would be cool. <laughs> um, I've got a, I've drawn a bell here with an angry face on it as a boss. <laughs> nice. And my idea was that it would be an Abbey boss that synced its attacks to the bell sounds and the music. That would be pretty cool. I know, and it would be almost impossible, which is why it's in my that would be pretty cool segment. But like, it would be fucking awesome if I could actually pull that off. This thing's got a long ass reload. What was it got written down? Um... Oh, oh, wait a minute. It had a three mag a minute ago. Does, does killing enemy give it an extra magazine? I wouldn't be surprised. I also have uh, Flying Forks written down and Grandmother. Flying Forks would be a uh, powder keg based on a flying fox. And uh, Grandmother is Grandmother with like an M1 Garand. <laughs> nice. And this is just sort of my thought process. My brain go, my brain go wee. Also, I realize you didn't go to the belly, so I'm gonna go piss myself and cry. <laughs> okay, you do that. Um. Oh. Just so much to do, so little time. You've already got like a billion sprites you've already made that have, you haven't programmed yet, so I'd work on those yes. first. Shut up! You're not my real dad. <laughs> I am your dungeon dad. I want to. I really want to do like more with tachyons. More with what? Uh, the fat line. Oh, it shoots tachyons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that come from the wall and travel towards the gun. And I don't think that should be just like a one gun thing. I think we can do at least five or six guns based on that concept. You made the thin line already, didn't you? Yes, I've made the thin line. And it's I, it's unique, I like it, but I want to do more. I want to mm. make a gun that's literally just the magnum, but it bullets go the other way. That could be interesting, yeah. This uh, this level gonna, gonna, gonna load anytime soon? It's stuttering, it looks like, so it probably is doing something. Whatever um, it's doing, it don't like it. But, like, tachyon boomerangs that come from the wall, and then halfway to you turn around and go back towards the wall. <laughs> or, like, a tachyon shotgun, or a tachyon rocket launcher, or a tachyon grenade launcher. There's just so much potential there. And my brain just latches onto that mechanic and goes, yes, that, I want that. Put that in my salad. It's, it's, it's dangerous. <laughs> Help me. I just noticed the, um, the ammo on the wheel doesn't update to whatever your maximum ammo actually is. It just yeah, goes better it, based on the default, which is fair. But... It's, it's fair until you realize that that could be fixed by changing one variable. <laughs> Too bad that modder has uh, quit already. <laughs> Drops two of the best mods ever created. Dips. I also want to put uh, an S tier gun that inflicts every status effect at once. That could be pretty good. Including modded ones. Including modded ones, yes. It just fucking nonsense gun. Because, like, I don't know, I feel like there's room for that. I feel like that's a valid design space. Oh, yeah, space. definitely, definitely. But so I, I think consider... I, I, I just want to say I think with this gun the gimmick is the oh no doesn't matter. I was gonna say if I hit every bullet I get extra mag size, but that 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 was immediately proven to be incorrect. I, I'm getting hmm. extra mag size. Maybe I should just read the description, but I don't know about that. Reading is for nerds. Uh, sorry I've been rambling so much about my my like design notebook. No, no, I like it. I just yeah. I just haven't had a good ramble in a in a while, you know. <laughs> You haven't been on this, uh, on, like, doing a video with me for a while is what you mean. Yes. Be available more. No. <laughs> God, he's, he's the fucking dad from a Disney Channel original movie. He doesn't show up to his son's fucking baseball game because he's a dick. 
that's, that's what, what you are. are. I am. I that's what, what you are. This pillar does. It creates yeah, it a diamond a that gives me some blood stats. Diamond. Oh, I think you answered your own question. You give a heart is, 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 is that, is that all it does? It seems it seems like it has a lot of fanfare for a stat upgrade. Uh, it probably does more knowing Bunny, but... I don't even think Bunny makes that. I asked Bunny about it, and he was like, no, 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 not me. <laughs> huh. I think it's Sparpy. Ah, do you see that shot then? What, what a hit. Honestly, I didn't... It didn't even click with me that that might be Sparpy because usually it's Bunny who does weird, like, flashy stuff. Weird in a good way, by the way. Weird flashy stuff like that. Oh. I also wrote down... I I've written down a bunch of, like, gun... Like... Function concepts without hmm. actual, like... Actual guns themselves, yeah. Just how they could work. I've written down, On fire takes a list of all enemy positions in the room, homes tightly between each point, and then returns to the player. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So when you when you fire, the bullet rapidly zips from each enemy in the room and then back to you. But it, it chooses based on where they were when you fired it, not where they are now. The loot engine. Uh, that's basically the D20. Rerolls pickups. Okay. Um, let's just have a look what this does now. Um, primitive form of the railgun designed. Okay, it doesn't. Good. I love oh, there's also this too. Describe how they work. Blow it up. You can't. Yeah, I, I got this. Go. At least promise me you'll go to bullet hell, would you please? Yeah, of course. <laughs> if I live that long. <laughs> you see said facetiously. Um, I've written down, gum that causes a rainstorm and pelts the room with raindrops. Hmm. Kind of like Tainted Mare from Isaac. And in question marks, meteor variant? Oh, definitely. And in in quotations, quotations, meteor version that drops uh, stakes from the um, bait launcher. Oh yes. Um, speaking of meteors, actually, I remember a and D, &D campaign once where, within like the first couple of sessions, a very stupid player who nobody liked decided <clears throat> that they were going to try and shoot an archmage. Ooh. So and because I started this, because I started the story with speaking of meteors, I think anyone who knows Dungeons and Dragons knows how that <laughs> one went. They got stumpled. But I've written down here: uh, gun that consumes walls for ammo. What? What do you mean? Like when you reload it, it eats walls inside the room because obviously it can't eat external walls but you see these internal dividing walls yeah they can be destroyed without consequence because they don't like section the player off from anything they're not should, supposed to be able to access we should have more guns that do stuff like that like a like a bar that can like tunnel through that'd be cool i plan to make a doomsday shotgun that destroys walls like but I've written, down, I've written down here like that this gun would, when you reload, it would consume those walls for ammo. Hmm. Kind of like the, the, the big shotgun that consumes the, the enemies, but it consumes yeah. wall pieces instead. I like the idea. I've written down a beam that when it hits in, when it's intersecting an enemy, it gives off sparks at the enemy's position. Oh, okay, okay. So, wait, wait, wait. Now, I'm a little confused. Is that when you're firing it? Like, when you're firing the beam, the beam passes through an enemy, and while damaging that enemy, sparks fly off from the ah, enemy. Ah, I see. They can hit other enemies. Yeah. I've written down here, a uh, flamethrower that costs half a heart to fire, F can fire for a significant length of time, heals half a heart if you kill an enemy in that firing time. So it yeah. costs costs health to use, but you can get that health back if you actually are good with the gun. I like the idea. I always like guns that are going to like reward accuracy or reward skill, like the uh, Hyper Light Blaster and stuff. 
I've got down um, a limited range beam that leaves fire at the end. I've written down... Oh, this is one you probably like. I've written down for a, a beam that gives off lightning bolts. Hmm, yeah. Like, randomly along its length emits lightning bolts. I like it. Yeah, it's gonna You like good. lightning? I do like lightning. I like the arc, arc laser. Lightning. Arc laser inbound. I like the idea. We I've also written down bullet hell. A gun that has that fires two streams of projectiles, uh, with one projectile stream being homing and the other being normal. So like you're firing at one enemy and the gun is firing at another. Confused about the hell's going on in this room right now. Uh, that enemy, the big fucking tumor looking testicle, it uh, buffs the other enemies. Oh, okay. Do I have anything explosive? Does the flag encounter as explosive? No. It does look very cool though. Did it just make Mickey Mouse? <laughs> <laughs> it's modern art. It is. I don't think I have anything explosive. That saddens me deeply. Does this count as explosive? Ah. What are, what are you looking for? Uh, I got explosive burst. So I was hoping I had a weapon that had explosive on it, but I didn't. Oh, right, right. What's this do again? Uh, it's just a burst revolver that fires all its ammo, or all its clip in one shot. Decent enough. It's just a, a basic burst gun, yeah. Nothing, nothing too fancy. I've got him down here. Really indecisive boomerang. <laughs> As a boomerang that just goes back and forth for a while. How about you make a, a boomerang that just makes comments about how you should get a job um, and it's easy to buy a house? I thought this was you shitting on me again. Not gonna no, lie. I'm just, just, ah. make, just making fun, fun of boomers. Oh my god, what the hell? Oh! Ah! What is this? What? Does this not please you? It's bizarre. Now I want to empty this thing. And get down to the laser section of it to see what happens with that. Oh yeah, you'll have way more uh, ammo on the laser section. Yeah, there. exactly. Thank you for key. No ammo, thank you. I don't want ammo. Let's keep it going. Yeah, just make a boomer rang. Boomer rang. Did you now? Um, <laughs> Amazing. I also looked into, uh, so you know Wile E. Coyote? Yeah. I looked into the Acme Corporation from the old Roadrunner cartoons, and what specifically they sold in the cartoons looking for inspiration. And so far I have written down uh, four real things from the Roadrunner cartoons. Acme Hen Grenade, Acme wow. Trick Balls, Acme Dehydrated Boulders, and Acme <laughs> Earthquake Pills. God damn. <laughs> I like Earthquake Pills. Did, did, did you just telefrag me with that laser, you absolute cook? Definitely gonna die, but it's fine. Oh, I also have written down Sniper that spawns Ring of Tachyons on pierced enemies. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a cool idea, definitely. So when you shoot an enemy with the, the sniper rifle, a ring of bullets appear around it and travel yeah. towards the enemy. I like that. Gives it a bit of a helping hand and looks really cool.
Just one of your rooms by, rooms by any chance? Yes. But it's a redesign of an old layout. It has a, like, the old layout was every type of blob yeah, one after I another. Remember, I remember that room. But, but this layout is just some poison blobs and then it's over. I separated, I separated the rooms out into it's multiple just, different yeah, rooms. Yeah, yeah. Right, and and just that one on slot that basically bends through all of your ammo. Yeah. God damn! The lag is heavy today. Oh, I swear I've also written down sniper with smart flak. With smart flak. And, yeah, smart flak. Like when it when the bullet hits a wall, it fires uh, a bullet at every other enemy nearby, mm. and not just in random directions. Yeah, that's cool. This this is just what I've been. It'd be cool if it was like mind. a charged one as well, and did more flak based on how long you charged it. Turtle, you're a genius. Yay. Uh, oh, I also wanted to look into uh, multi-status effect guns. So you have guns that freeze, you have guns that burn, you have guns that poison, but you rarely, you rarely have guns that do both. Yeah. We need to so freeze So I thought of something like uh, a helix gun, a helix style gun where one bullet has fire and one bullet has poison. Or yeah. a frost burn gun that both freezes enemies and burns. Yeah, them. I'm gonna say yeah. You need the frost burn. Come on, dude! Big first die. More junk. On to the boss. I also want to steal from the Epicac mod. Do it. They have an item called uh, Schrodinger's Tears. Yes, Schrodinger's that Tears. That I think would be good. would be really interesting in Gungeon. I'll ask I'll ask for Spear Killer's blessing. I'm sure. But I, I I think he'd be fine with it. Especially with how much I've contributed to the Epic Cake mod. <laughs> yeah. For those of you that don't know, they have a suggestions channel where you can suggest ideas for the mod. And uh, the, at the end of it, like each like month or every few months, they'll list all the accepted suggestions. And they accepted around 200 different ideas. I would say 180 of them are never names. <laughs> yeah. All complete with art as well. They're not just suggestions in text. Yeah, I, I did a thing. You got obsessed for a while though, didn't you? Yeah. I love um, the fact that you can you can use this um this whatever this active item's called, you can use it twice. So like while it's active you can seize it again. And if you do, it literally halves the frame rate again. Ah, lovely. Look at that. It just kills everything. Oh my lord. So I've, I've written down some ideas for, like a an Ir an Irwin revolver, a Penrose repeater, a Steve Irwin revolver. No, Irwin revolver and Penrose repeater, uh, named after famous quantum physicists. Yeah, I prefer a revolver that fires stingrays called a Steve um, Irwin. No, that'll be the synergy uh, with whatever whenever I make a stingray. <laughs> And the Heisenberg Maxim, which is not uh, Schrodinger-based, but uh, the idea is just that its bullets become stronger when you don't look at them. Mm, which is sort of the yeah, same, cool idea, same yeah. idea, based on the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. The also sells meth. Shut up! <laughs> I knew you were going to be annoyed we need to, that. We need to cook, Turtle! Tur Turty! We need to cook! We need to cook the meth! That screen here. Thank you. We need to cook the who, who is it that broke this? Cook the mat! The mat. 
Oh, oh Demet. It's, it's not broken. It's not broken. Demet. I, I don't Demet. have any items left though. It's Demet that broke it. Look, there's a meth on screen. Meth. What that pile? Big pile of, of big pile of meth. <laughs> it's got two sticking out of it. <laughs> Mind them diamonds. Excuse me. Are you okay? You can tell he's watched Breaking Bad. He knows exactly what it's like. Yeah, I've I've seen every episode. Beam me up, Scotty. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> oh lord. Anyways, it's been a fun hour. We actually managed to get an hour together. That, that was that's rare. Yes, an hour. It's the longest time I've ever spent with anyone. Huzzah! Now back to your hole. Oh god. <laughs> I do, must I go in the hole, father? Must you I must. go in the hole? You must. Back back to your spriting. You can play Terraria, and that's it. Uh, I'll go back in the hole. I'll, I'll put the lotion on my skin. <laughs> oh. Tatum uh, pushed open the door to come into the room. I heard that, yeah. And now she's looking around, because she's wondering what the fuss was, because I was... um. Autisming on the couch. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, Anyways, we'll probably been... have to leave off, sadly. We, we big, will, but it's been a lot of sad fun. Moment. We'll do more, we'll do more, don't worry. More will come. Anyways, I hope we, you guys we... did enjoy. It was fun to get Neverdin back on again. And it was a good run despite the lag, but whatever. It lags sometimes. It just be like that. We won't have these problems when we reach modding 2.0. Yeah, we're going gone to space and I'm gonna live on the moon and I'm gonna the moon is made of Wensleydale yes Wallace and Gromit mod coming when uh does Wallace have a gun no but he does have a pair of trousers mm, that's a good that's a good point does he, he shoot the trousers he doesn't but the trousers control him that's, that just sounds like clothes. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to I'm starting to get the feeling you don't know what I'm talking about. You're right. I don't know what pants <laughs> are. I'm sorry. There's an episode of Wallace and Gromit where he uh, he invents some pants that are supposed to help him like with daily stuff, and they end up getting a mind of their own and controlling him. I feel like I've seen that exact plot before in like three different shows. Probably, but Wallace and Gromit might have done it first because Wallace and Gromit is old. Well, Wallace and Gromit did it better. Wallace and Gromit is Wallace the pinnacle of human achievement. Wallace and Gromit did it in Claymation. Of course it was better. Wallace and Gromit is the pinnacle of human achievement. It is. Uh, we should probably leave off though. <laughs> probably, otherwise we'll be here a while. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed, and yeah, we'll see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.